Once you configure Retrospect for SQL Exchange, you can then do a backup. So you close the, the Volumes window and go to Backup. And you can click on Sources. And once you click on Sources, you can choose either your SQL server to get all of the SQL databases below it, or you can select individual databases by highlighting them. In this case, we'll go ahead and select the SQL server and click OK. We can go to Options and then More Choices, and under More Choices of the Options, Retrospect has some specific options for SQL, specifically Full Backup, Differential, Log Backup, and Log Backup with no truncate. We click OK, and then we can go ahead and click on Backup, and then Retrospect will begin the backup process of those individual databases. When doing a backup with SQL, you'll often find a record of those backups in the Enterprise Manager of the SQL server. If errors occur during backup of SQL, you can also check the SQL Enterprise Manager to see if there are any errors. For now, let's go ahead and inside Retrospect we'll go to Control L and we'll look at the log. Now the operations log will indicate that we've copied a specific database, we did a full backup, it compared the database, and the size and the performance of that backup. Let's return to Backup. When we return to Backup, we can go ahead to our sources, and we can change it to our Exchange Server. So we can select the first storage group, or we can choose the actual Exchange Server. And then we go to Options. We do have options that are specific to Exchange. Full Backup Differential and Log slash Incremental Backup. We're going to do Full Backup. And go ahead and execute that backup. And in the Activity Monitor, we can see that Retrospect is attempting to back up the first storage group. And now it's doing the second storage group that we have. Let's return to the immediate backup and take a little bit of a closer look. We're going to click Preview. Retrospect will show us the actual items that appear inside these storage groups. So in this particular storage group, we see that there is a mailbox store, and there's also a public store. Let's go ahead and change the source to some mailboxes. So in this case, we can choose the mailbox container, or we can pick the individual mailboxes, or we can pick all the mailboxes. In this case, let's go ahead and choose the container and click OK. Retrospect will do a scan and it'll tell us how many messages we need we have that need to be backed up. When I click on the, the preview button again, I can go ahead and I can look and see what Retrospect would back up when it does the mailbox backup. And if I look inside the inbox, this person has two files with in the inbox. We did a backup previously of this data, and so Retrospect is showing a diamond next to those items. So we're going to go ahead and close that, and we'll go ahead and execute the backup anyway. And it went fairly quick because the data in these mailboxes had been previously backed up to this particular backup set. One of the other things you're going to notice is in the source list, Retrospect lists the M drive. Retrospect will always exclude the M drive. It is never recommended that you back that up. So if you were to choose the My Computer container, Everything that you see in this list, basically everything all the way down here, will be backed up with the exception of that M drive. So backing up my computer, in this case, would get all of that data. Now you may have SQL or Exchange that's out on the client or on the network, and that's okay too. Those will appear under Backup Clients at the very bottom. Now to see what you previously backed up, you can go ahead to Reports, and then you can go to Backup, the Database Backup History Report. And inside there, it will show you your Exchange Server and your SQL databases, and it'll show you what you did with each of these databases. It'll tell you that you did a full backup, the dates and times that those database backups took place. You can select them, and you can get properties on those items, 
and it will tell you what media the database is stored on. So if your backup, if your database is spread over two or three pieces of media, it'll tell you what media is required in order to restore the database from scratch.